Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Throw on that ski mask because it's time for a heist. And we're about to do a humongous takeover. We're trying to rob a three-story bank with three different safes with a bunch of our buddies. We're talking about Burger Brothers here. Now, this is a one to four player game. It says it plays in 60 to 90 minutes, although I found it to be shorter than 90. And uh, so essentially it's a cooperative game. Uh, we're gonna be running around trying to get away from guards and trying to steal the money. Uh, this is designed by Tim Fowers, who has done some well-known games called Walkstar, another cooperative game, and uh, most recently Paperback, a game I absolutely love. Uh, it comes in actually the same shape box that this one comes in. Uh, so let's take a look, I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Here we have Burger Bro set up, and here we have three different floors of a bank that we will be going in and trying to steal money from a safe. And over the course of the game, we're going to be running away from guards. We need to get money from each floor safe and then get off the roof. First floor, second floor, third floor. Now you get a random character, and they're all pretty cool. The artwork's really nice in this game, and this guy's the Rigger, and we'll see that he matches here. There's also an opposite side, which gives you, uh, one side gives you a normal ability, one side gives you sort of an advanced player ability. And when you flip this over, they either look like this or they look like the advanced guys. And just to show you some of the artwork between the Raven and the Peter Man, all these guys have special abilities that are pretty thematic. I'll go over some of these in just a moment, but just to show you some of the artwork in the game of the different characters. Now at the beginning of the game, you will select where you start. You flip over that tile and you'll be starting there. A guard will start in a certain spot and there'll be a die shown where he is going to next. And this tells you how many spots he's going to move after every person's turn. And this is where he started. You have these patrol cards and this is where he's going to be going next. And so I have my two players here and each of them start with three stealth. Think of these as sort of life points, if you will. And I have the juicer and the acrobat. And there's a nice player aid that tells you what you can do on your turn, how it works, and it gives you a, a, a tile distribution as well. Now these big wooden things are walls. You can't go through them and certain special abilities can't work through them as well. And what we're trying to do is find that safe. So on your turn, you have four actions. One of the things you can do is you can just merely peek at an adjacent tile. And by peeking, you just flip it over. Some of them have some special things. For example, this is a keypad. To enter, roll a die, open on a six. So for a second action, I could try to roll and get on this. And if I miss, I can take another die and roll for my third action. And if I miss, I can take yet another die and roll on my fourth action. And I got a six, so I can finally move in. That's a sort of a special thing that all these, all these little uh, tiles sort of do serpent things. And now that I've unlocked the keypad, other people can use this as well. But of course, I would never really do that move because we know the guard's gonna move over here in the shortest path possible after my turn, and we can't have the guards run through us because he goes one, two, and anytime you get passed through a guard, essentially you lose one of these stealth points, which is a life point. So in real life, I never would have done that. That would have been a done move, but I'm kind of showing you how the mechanics work. Now, for peeking for an action, remember you get four actions, I can just move. So what I do is I move and I flip it over, and sometimes they're bad, so you wanna peek first. This is stairs. Ooh, this is cool. So if I wanted to, I could use this to go to the next floor. So this tile is this tile on the second floor. I could simply move to here. And so when you flip this tile, let's let's look at this. One thing's happened. Number one, that's my second act. I moved there. First, as soon as we get to a new floor, we will see where the guard starts on this floor. And then we'll find out where he's going next. And he's gonna go here. Now notice, the die has a three here because the second floor it starts at three. So he's going to move three spots because he's on a higher floor. Now this says two, it's a laser alarm. It says two actions to trigger or uh, two actions to enter or trigger an alarm. Well, I don't want to spend the two actions. So what happens is I trigger this alarm here. So I've spent two actions. I've, I've moved and I've moved. And now I'll just do a peek. We get to see, ooh, it's a secret door. This allows me to enter through walls. And for my fourth action, I'll come over here and I will uh, move this. Now this is a camera. If a guard moves through or is on any other tile that's a camera, he automatically sees them and triggers an alarm. But now that this alarm is triggered, where he was headed before is no longer where he's gonna head. He's automatically now going to head here. 
And actually, what you do is you add this die to however many alarms are out on this floor, and that's how much he moves. So instead of moving three, he's gonna move four. So the guard's gonna go the fastest way possible clockwise. So it's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's the same distance, but now he's gonna go clockwise. So he's gonna go one, two, three, four, three plus one alarm, and ouch, I just got hit, and I just lost a, a, a stealth point there. Now notice this guard moved because we ended on this turn. Wherever you end your turn, that's the guard that moved. This one didn't move because this one's there, so sometimes you're trying to go to other floors to make sure guards don't move at certain times. Now let's say this guy moves over here for his first action. Ooh, and he sees a safe. This is cool. Let's talk about the safe. This is how you actually get the loot in this game. Now let's say over a course of other turns, uh, you revealed all of these. Because what you need to do is the combination of this safe is finding all the rooms that are in the same column in the same row as the safe. So a few turns later, we got all these things turned over and I get on the safe. For an action, I can add one die for two action points. So if I just started my turn here, I could spend two actions to put a die and my other two actions to put another die and then the guy would move one, two. As soon as he moves to here, we draw another card, we figure out where to put the die, and he goes. If he still had moves left, he would continue to move to that next one, but in this case he moved two and he stops. If he was moving three, he would have went one, two, and then he would have moved one towards that new location. So now when it's my turn, for an action, I can roll all the dice that are on the safe. So I go like this and I hit a two or a one. Now each of the rooms have numbers on them. This is the combination for the safe. Any two or one tile, I put a cracked token there. Now it doesn't matter how many you find, if all twos or ones, we put them on there. In this case, that's all I got. So for my second action, I'll roll again. I have a one and a three. Ooh, that didn't really help me. There's no ones or threes. For my third action, I'll roll again four and five. Ooh, there's a four here, there's a four here, and there's a four here. That really helped out. And for my last action, I'll roll this again, and it's a five and a three. What I really need is these two are sixes. Now let's just assume that my last roll, I had rolled a six. This would have completed this, and I would have gotten the cracked, the safe, because I had gotten all of them. When this happens, you will trigger a silent alarm. For this floor and every floor below it, in this case it's floor one, so it doesn't matter, but if we were on the second floor, you would take this die and you'd up it by one. So from, it goes from two to three, so now the guard's gonna move three here. If this was the second floor, every floor below, below it, so the first floor would do this as well. So this guy's gonna also move one, two, three to the closest part of here. We also are gonna get a loot card and we're gonna get a tool card. Let's look at what these do. Now you'd only get one of these tool cards, but I'll show you a few just so you get a feel for what they do. These are roller skates. You discard to get two additional actions on this turn because you're moving faster. Makeup, discard to give all players on your turn on the current tile a stealth token, which is basically more life. And maybe you might get an invisible suit, which discard to not be seen by guards or cameras while moving and gain one additional action this turn. You might also, so that, those are the tools, you'd get one of those when you crack the case. You'd also get a loot, but the loots usually do something bad for you. Chihuahua. Each roll, roll a die. If you roll a six, trigger an alarm on your tile. Makes the guard come right to you. Mirror, minus one action while holding. The holder does not trigger laser alarms because he's got the mirror to point away the laser alarms. The key card, holder must be present to roll dice on cracking any safe. So now this guy has to be on the safe for anybody to crack it. So you get loot, but it typically hurts you. Now the last action we haven't talked about is hacking. If you're in a computer room, this is a fingerprint computer room. For an action, you can drop a hack token. So maybe I want to drop all my actions, all four of them. One, two, three, four. You can't have more than six hacks tokens on there. And what this does is any floor that is about to get an alarm, in this case, it's the fingerprint room, the fingerprint alarm. So any floor that's about to get a fingerprint alarm like this, instead of getting that, you can discard one of these tokens. So this helps you in a future time. And it can be in any floor that that might be happening. And nobody has to be on the tile at the time that they take one of these off. So it helps you for later. Now also on your turn, if you do two actions or less, you must take one of these event cards. Usually they're bad because you're trying to not move a lot near the guard. And so here you have squeak, move the guard on your floor one tile towards the nearest player. Or freight elevator, fall up one floor but does not count as entering the tile. Throw your voice, move the guard destination into an adjacent tile from its current location. Buddy system, this is a good one. Choose a player, move the piece onto your current tile, does not count as entering. 
key, uh, this could actually this one could be good or bad depending on the situation. Key code change. Any open keypad tiles are now locked again. Roll a six to re-enter. Heads up, the next player gains an additional action on their turn. So once in a while they're good, but mostly they're bad. That's pretty much the game. You'll continue doing this. You have to get the safe cracked and the loot from all three and then take the stairs from here up onto the top of the roof. Basically, you leave the stairs with all your loot cards. And as long as nobody runs out of these, you're good. If anybody runs out of your stealth tokens, once they have none left, if they get hit by a guard or seen by a guard on that tile, everybody loses. And I'll just show you a couple of special abilities. This girl has a free action. You can create an alarm in adjacent tile, but not through walls. So you can use an alarm to put a, basically a false alarm to confuse the guards and make them run in a the direction you want them to run in. The acrobat may move into a tile with the guard as a free action and he doesn't get caught because he's an acrobat. He's flying around, he's stealthy. This guy, the safe cracker, basically when rolling a safe, you get, or a keypad, you get one additional die. This guy, once per turn, he can look at the next card that the guard's going to, and he can decide to put it on top or on bottom. Those are sort of some of the things that the special abilities do, and that's how you play Burgle Bros. Now, because he's designed a couple of games that I really like, I was very interested in this game. Also, it raised a ton of money on Kickstarter. I think like $240,000. It had a lot of buzz going on. Uh, so let's talk about this. Now, the game itself. First, I'm going to tell you about the things I liked about the game. Uh, first of all, the game is, th the best thing about it is it's very thematic. Uh, I like how everything makes sense. There's certain types of alarms. There's cameras where if the guy runs, the guard runs to the camera, he'll see you if you're on a camera tile. There's different computer rooms for different types of alarms that you can hack. And no matter what floor you're on, you can hack and make sure the alarm doesn't go off. Uh, there's certain, uh, you know, tiles that you fall from one floor to the other floor. Uh, just also, you know, secret doors. You can go through walls. A lot of the thematics are really cool. Also, same thing with some of those loot cards and tools cards. Almost everything in this game makes thematic sense, and it's fun, and I like that. I like the artwork. It's, it's sort of that comic funny artwork. I like the special abilities. I like how each of the characters can be one of two different types of identities, depending if it's the regular or the advanced, and they have stickers and the cards to match that. I think that's cool, too. So overall, that's really cool. Mechanics, I enjoy too. I like, it's simple. It's like, you can do one of four things. Peek, move, hack, you know, add to the bank or roll the bank. So that's five things. Pretty simple. It moves very fast. Um, you're really, it's, there's two real aspects of this game. There's exploration, where you're going around to the tiles and figuring it out and flipping things over and exploring. And then there's that puzzly aspect. The puzzly aspect of trying to figure out knowing where that guard's going to move and knowing whether I'm going to get caught. But the tricky thing is, is if a bunch of you stay on the same floor, then he's going to, wow, if there's four of us playing and we're all on the same floor and the guy's moving two, well, after my turn, he's going to move two, four, so he's going to move six spots towards that thing. Who knows where he'll be from there? So it's really good to spread out. Uh, so I, it's like that whole sneaky thing where you're like trying to hide, but if you go to two little spaces, you got to pull that event car, which is usually bad. So mechanically, I thought the game was cool too. I liked how you, that whole grid thing where you get the, the safe and you're trying to roll the dice to get there, but you got to spend more action, a little bit of a pressure of luck there. That, that part reminded me a little bit of Forbidden Desert where you're trying to find that sort of the crosshairs of the safe there to get the combination. So overall, I think the mechanics worked well. It was quick. The artwork was good. The thematics are awesome. Um, so, was there anything I didn't like about the game? Uh, yes and no. There's there's not anything I really disliked about the game. Sometimes, what can happen with those guards can feel a little random, where it's like, oh, he goes here. Okay, well, an alarm just got tripped, and now he's going to come over here. But I like how you can trip those alarms on purpose. That's another thing I actually like about it. Let me step back for a second. Where you go and you, you someone's going to get caught the next turn, and so, hey, I'm going to trip alarm over here, and he's going to start coming over this way to let that guy run away. But sometimes it can feel a little bit random, where, okay, I'm here, he's going to go there, so he goes there, and then he goes there, and then all of a sudden, like, you don't know where the next card's going to come up. Now, it says you can look at the discard pile, but I find you can could, you could play this one of two ways. You can either shoot from the hip and quarter to just go with the style and just go with things to keep the game moving, or you can look at all those cards and try to deduce where he probably might go next time. And I find that that slows the game down a lot. Um, I, if you want to do that, I would recommend just putting little cubes from another game. Just put them on the, on the place where those cards are drawn, and that way you can quickly see which cards are not going to come up again. I also didn't mention in the video that with less than four players, there's less of those patrol cards, and every time those cards get cycled through, 
the dice goes up and it gets faster. Uh, so it's sort of a time mechanism. I don't think I showed that in the overview, but that's another interesting mechanism. So it has a lot of cool mechanisms and I liked it, but I can't put my, my finger on why I wasn't blown away with it. I had fun. The, everything was it was just an enjoyable experience but it's not one that like blew me away that's kind of like oh i can't wait to play this again i can't wait to play this again but it is a good solid game with good mechanisms good art and everything ties together nicely so it's a solid effort good game if you like co-ops this is going to be one to check out if you like the theme it's definitely very thematic and fun just not one that i think is going to be in running for co-op game of the year and that is burgo bros